Welcome back to Muscle Magazine. We now return to the IFBB North American for the men's division. Who said champions only come from Muscle Beach? This year, it was a Canadian route. Chris Adams reports. The Los Angeles audience learned one thing from this year's IFBB North American. Never underestimate Canadians. Traditionally, Americans have called the shot at this contest, but not anymore. Four out of the five weight class winners were Canadian, as were the majority of the top placers. It began in the bantamweights with Rodney Point du Jour. This pint-sized powerhouse beat out a field of other Canadian and Mexican bantamweights with great symmetry and balance. Third in the lightweights was California's Jerry Chow, who had won this weight class at the Junior USA several months earlier. Although he was not in the same shredded condition, he wore a big smile and had fun anyway. Flint, Michigan's Rick Romeo is one bodybuilder who has more to worry about than his next meal or training session. He's been the licensing director for the growing powerhouse gym chain since he was 21. Rick was a fireball of intensity on his way to second place. The only American class winner was Al Escobar Jr., last year's USA Bantamweight champion. The Phoenix, Arizona resident had perhaps the best shape and symmetry in the contest, and his good looks had the women in the house screaming. As sliced as he is, he habitually eats chocolate up until two weeks out from contests. Al had recently graduated Northern Arizona University with his degree in physical therapy. My strongest point is, is basically my whole body is the symmetry that I have. They say that I have uh, the best symmetry they've, they've seen in a long time for someone of my stature. And uh, instead of looking like a lightweight or a bantamweight on stage, when I'm by myself, I look like a, a light heavier or heavyweight, you know, because of the symmetry. But uh, I think I brought my legs up a lot. Those are probably the best body part that I have right now, along with my delts and my biceps and triceps. Walter Anderson crossed the Rocky Mountains from his native Colorado to place third at a national show. He's been competing off and on for seven years since his first victory at the NPC Teenage Colorado. To improve his bodybuilding, he's taken many courses on kinesiology and anatomy at local universities. With a name like Mauricio Petrolini, you'd think he was from Rome, Italy, rather than Vancouver, British Columbia. The 27-year-old personal trainer has won this class at the British Columbia Championships and the Western Canadians. In fact, if one of his rivals from his own gym hadn't showed up, he would have been victorious here, too. Although middleweight champion Franco Cavallari originally planned on competing as a light heavyweight, Fate sometimes has a way of turning negatives into positives. The Western Canadian overall champion now admits that he would have had a hard time placing in that higher weight class. After breaking his ankle playing soccer at age 17, Franco started training with weights and rapidly grew. Franco doesn't only take supplements, he has his own line. Well, I think there's always been a lot of good bodybuilders in Canada. They just never had any exposure and uh, they never had any opportunities. And now I think the opportunities are being brought to them and they're like myself, I think I've pushed myself far enough to, to uh, take advantage of the opportunities, and here I am. Do you remember Sam Artigopoulos, the light heavyweight winner from last year's Philadelphia Muscle Mania? Training with Philadelphia guru Richard Brown, he's added 10 pounds of new muscle, stretching the limits of the light heavyweight class. Almost as interesting as his new, bigger package is his unique nickname. Well, I got the ancient Greek, the nickname the ancient Greek god from all my friends. All my friends said, wow, you look like the Greek god, like an ancient Greek god. So that's how I got my nickname, the ancient Greek god. And plus, I'm all Greek, 100% Greek. Third place went to Jason Markoviki, a construction worker from Thornhill, Ontario. For years, he's been compared physically to IFBB pro Rich Gaspari. Unfortunately, this also applies to his blocky waist, which has definitely hurt him at this show for the past three years. Having all your eggs in one basket can be a risky thing for a bodybuilder. This is the only show Dave Fisher can compete in to get his pro card. And he trained and dieted since his narrow loss last year with the North American in mind. Tragically, some last-minute water retention cost him his dream, and it'll be yet another year before his next shot. He won't be too depressed, though. He has his own Body by Fisher column in Muscle Mag International and recently married 91 North American lightweight winner Sue Price. Presently, Dave is training with Milwaukee Muscle Mania champ Julio Noguera. I knew I had to be better than last year, and I went through more this year than I've ever gone through to look like that. It was the hardest show I've ever done, getting ready for the dieting and the cardio this year. Because uh, I knew I had to, you can't come in worse the, than the year before, they're not going to look at it. They want to see improvements. 
Most bodybuilders feel that they have to train on a six-day double split to have a great physique. Not so, says Bob Weatherill, the light heavyweight winner from Mississauga, Ontario. Hitting each body part once a week has helped this ex-hockey player and motocross rider carve a symmetrical physique that reminded many of Bob Paris at his best. Doug Reiser of Martinsburg, West Virginia, has been at the junior national level for years and felt it was time to move up in the ranks. Doug owns his own gym just outside Buffalo, New York, and maintains an off-season weight of over 300 pounds. To look at 255-pound Curtis Leffler of Honolulu, Hawaii, you might think he would be a pretty mean-tempered character. However, his son, Curtis Jr., who he raises as a single parent, would tell you differently. Curtis subsisted entirely on Metrex supplement powders in the two months before this show and came in huge and ripped. For many, the IFBB North American was like going to see a movie where you already knew the ending. This was because Big Paul Dillett, who barely lost last year's show to Ray McNeil, was the man to beat. All year long, the Weeder Muscle magazines were hyping this Canadian giant as he continued to grow and grow. The former pro football player won this class as easily as Arnold would have won the 1939 Mr. America, posing with all the confidence of a sure thing winner. The overall pose down proved to be merely a formality as the judges reach their decision seconds into comparisons. Paul Dillett now brings his titanic mass into the pro ranks to make waves. For Muscle Magazine, I'm Chris Adams.